Okay, it's officially time for the Elawi My Thoughts, Ideas, Changes, so on and so forth. And yeah! <laughs> okay. So first off, we got Elawi, the Kraken Priestess. I like the idea. I don't, I don't like the finished product. <laughs> to be completely honest. But yeah, um damage, physical, style, more abilities. Um I'll give it. But at the same time I would put it a bit more in auto attacks because it does say I will admit she uses a lot of abilities that you don't fully realize, but she also does auto attack a whole lot too. So I guess it is fine where it is. But I kinda do think it should be a little bit more to the left, but only a little bit. Difficulty two, yeah. Um, no. This is a no. Damage, damage three. Toughness, no, no. There should be a, a crowd control in here too, because I consider her E to be two different types of CC. Yes, it's only a slow, but I still consider it two different types of CC, because <laughs> it's a stupid ability. Okay. Alawi's powerful physique is dwarfed on only by indomitable faith. As a property of the great kraken, she uses a huge golden idol to rip her foes, spheres from their bodies, and shatter their perception of reality. All who challenge the truth bearer of Nagakakaboris, okay, soon discover Alawi never battles alone. The god of the serpent isles fights by her side. Mm hmm. Okay, abilities. Property of an elder god. Allowing in the vessels she creates spawn tentacles on nearby impassable terrain. Tentacles swain at spirits, vessels, and victims for Allowing's harsh lesson. Tentacles deal physical damage to enemies hit and will heal Allowing if they damage a champion. Okay. Okay. Part number one that's a problem. The, her passive is literally infinite cues. It, if you've ever seen the, um, what's it called? Uh, Unlimited Blade Works from stinking. Why can't I think of it? Oh man, no, no, this this can't ha this cannot happen. I will not. I will not. Fate Stay Night. There we go. I don't know why I couldn't think of Fate Stay Night. But yeah, if you've ever seen Limited Blade Works from Fate Stay Night, then her passive is literally just infinite Q works. <laughs> because all it is is that she uses... Mm. She uses her... um, What's it called? her tentacles around the map, and then they will smack enemies that she's hit with her, her E or her W. But basically, every time they smack someone, it is her Q that is hitting them. And her Q hits hard. Uh, I'll go over the Q right here. Tentacle smash. Increase the damage dealt by tentacles. Increase the damage dealt by tentacles? When activated, ally smashes down a tentacle that deals physical damage. Oh, okay, so this just passively increases her own passive damage and her Q damage. <laughs> That's stupid. And her alt damage? That's really stupid. They should take that out right away. Uh, no, that is dumb. That is dumb. Um, yeah, but she just smashes down in front of her. Now, as I said, it's literally her passive is just that. Like, the tentacles do the exact same amount of damage. Each one of, and her passive... Uh, it heals for, like, whenever a tentacle smacks, but it also heals whenever her Q hits an enemy champion, too. And I'm like, that that is not right. This is a very big ranged ability, and you want to heal not yourself upon it. Like, I can understand with the passive to an extent, but at the same time, I really don't think that her um, Q should be healing her upon hitting an enemy champion. <laughs> like, oof. it's it's stupid that it does. So I think that her Q should be separate from her passive, meaning it should be doing different amounts of damage. Her passive itself should be doing less damage, but her Q should be doing the same amount of damage, but um, should not heal her like her passive is. Then we got her W, which is pretty actually a reasonable ability. It's not that bad. 
Harsh Slash It. Allow a leaps to her target, dealing physical damage and causing nearby tentacles to also swing at the target. Yeah, it, as I said, it's really nothing major. It just turns that person into, like, a marked enemy, causing the tentacles to hit, which, as I said, like, heal you and everything. It, it's really the one of the big things that gets the tentacles to hit in the first place, so... Then her E. Test of Spirit. This is the dumbest thing ever. Alawi rips the spirit from a foe's body, forcing it to stand before her. Spirits echo a percentage of the damage they take to the original target. If killed, or if the target gets too far from the spirit, the target will become a vessel and begin spawning tentacles, and then the tentacles will automatically try to hit them. This ability is the dumbest thing in the world. Because it does not hit minions, it goes through all targets, if it hits you under any circumstances, you will get your spirit yanked out, and the only thing you can do is to um, get away from taking damage is by walking out of the spirit circle, which then you're slowed, <laughs> And you will be forced to walk back and forth, dodge the tentacles that you yourself spawn, preventing you from getting any farm, preventing you from getting any EXP because you need to be standing so far away from that giant flippin' circle. <laughs> uh... And, um, oh man, it's, and then by the time that you're finally done, by the time you're no longer in, like, the spirit dimension, I basically want to call it, and the tentacles aren't spawning around you, and you kill the tentacles or something like that, you walk back into lane expecting to farm, and then the next thing you know, you get hit by another damn tentacle. And what really annoys me is that the range is long enough that you can be standing at your tower, and she could be standing outside of your tower's range, and she can hit you with her Q and then beat the shit out of it. And you have to literally walk outside of your turret range on the opposite side of your tower in order to get out of it. It is a ridiculous ability that I think that should be changed immediately. It, it, it's late game it's really not that big of an effect it's just kind of something that you want to use before you use your alt to spawn another tentacle but early game it is the dumbest ability that you can have it is so stupid it is oh let me yank you sort of <laughs> the only and like the only other option you have besides run is attack her and winning that type of fight against Salawi is impossible possible uh, like you either have to be a hard counter or already have like a kill on another lane or something like that like you happen to roam <laughs> because like you'll walk up to allow and the next thing you know she'll hit her w she'll slam down on you all the tentacles in the area around you will try to hit you but not only will they try to hit you because it's aoe damage they'll probably hit your vessel at the same time because they'll hit your vessel you'll take Twice as much damage because part of the damage that it does to the vessel goes to you. <laughs> then she'll use her Q, and her Q will heal her off of hitting you. I don't think it heals off of hitting the vessel, but yet again, you'll take twice as much damage because she'll hit both the vessel and she'll hit you. And even if you do start to fight her, and yeah, you're losing the fight, but you realize that you're losing the fight too late. She can kill the vessel, then slowing you as you're trying to run away from her, then she can run at you again. Again! <laughs> and while this entire time is going on, her Q is going down in cooldown. So by the time she's done beating the shit out of you, she can do it all over again! Or, not her Q, her E! It's, it's so stupid. It is a stupid combo that no champion should stink and have. I would rather her E be just a normal, like a Blitzcrank yank, <laughs> than it be that. Okay, to be truthful, I really would hate a Blitzcrank yank, but, um, at least, like, a Blitzcrank yank can hit minions or something like that. No, 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 no. She avoids minions. Then the next of her stupid kit is her alt, the Leap of Faith. It does not do it justice, what you just saw. <laughs> that video is nothing. Okay, Leap of Faith. Alawi smashes her idol into the ground, dealing physical damage to nearby enemies. A tentacle spawns for each enemy champion 
hit. Okay, so this actually really means nothing. In, in long term, Alawi can be countered super hard if you know how to fight her. 90% of people don't know how to fight her. <laughs> but this can mean technically nothing. If she alts in like a um a pit of like three you and two other allies, meaning three total enemies, if you chain CC her like the second she slams down, she will be able to do nothing. No tentacles will hit you, nothing. They will all just spawn in a circle around her. But if she managed to get off her W, each tentacle will then target that person and smack them. Meaning that they will also heal her. Meaning that each one of those five separate tentacles hitting you, plus her Q hitting you, will heal her six times. And it heals her for every champion hit. Meaning if all three of you get hit by all six tentacles, like you all happen to be bunched up and the tentacles just all hit you and you don't move, which would be a very bad idea, she'll basically regen her entire HP. Like her entire health bar will just appear and you're like, wait a minute, how did this happen? <laughs> it, it is very, very dumb how much she can heal, how fast she can get stronger, like th things like that are just oh my lord it's stupid. Now, originally when I heard about Alawi and I heard about the Kraken Priestess and you know I read her lore before I read her abilities, it, it talks a lot about the spirit and yet she has one spirit ability which is a busted ass ability. <laughs> um so when it comes to the rework, it's not, it's more of, honestly, more of like a brand new champion over a rework, rework of Alawi, to be completely honest, for what I have personally thought of. Um, first, I am going to say, like, the little changes that I've come up with her so far, such as, one, her Q should not have a passive of her tentacles just do more damage. That is stupid. <laughs> If anything, we can have her passive tentacles and alt tentacles slowly do more damage based off of her max level, meaning 1 to 18, because it's her passive that does it. The healing that she gets should actually be based off of the same thing, off of like level 6, 12, and 18. Her healing for a tentacle hitting someone should be increased, but not her Q tentacle hitting someone. This is only in her passive. So what her passive should be is every now and then she'll spawn a tentacle. Spawns a tentacle, it can only hit, you know, like the vesseled enemies and things like that. Now, um, upon being able to hit them, they will heal if it is an enemy champion. But the healing will be very, very small at level, like, 1 through 6. Then after you hit 6, it'll be increased by a little bit. You hit 12, increased by a little hit. You hit 18, increased by a little bit. That way, at the very at like level 18, she will be able to heal a reasonable amount. But early levels, it will be a bit more of a struggle. She'll still be healing, but it won't be anything that big. <laughs> Her Q will not be able to heal off of hitting an enemy champion. It will be perfectly fine the way it is. <laughs> Her W, I think, is fine. Um... Yeah, honestly, the main point that the you don't even max this ability. Like, you do it, like, Q, then you max your E, and then your W, because you're really the main reason you have your W is just to mark the enemy so that they, um, that your tentacles hit them. That Because, like, even if your Q hits them, it won't do it. If your E is active, then it will do it. But it won't even activate off of, like, just pulling out their spirit. It only activates... After they like the spirit dies or they get out of the range, causing them to become a vessel. So really, like your W, that's the main point of it, and I think that is fine. You know, like th that is fine because it works really well with both your passive and your alt. <laughs> then you have her E. This is going to get some changes, such as you know one. She can't um, do really stupid things with her E anymore, such as she, it's going to hit minions. 
Like, it, it needs to be able to hit minions or something along that line. Now, I would say that if it hits a minion or something that is not a champion, it should yank it. Meaning, it should grab it and it should just pull it to her. That way, it doesn't, like, rip out their spirit or anything like that. It will just grab the minion itself and pull it to her so she can punch it. But if it doesn't hit a minion, and if it does still hit an enemy champion, then it will do exactly what it does now. The main problem that I have with it is most times whenever I'm playing against certain people, like if I'm playing up against a Graves, or a Veger, or basically someone that I know has a skill shot that um, can be a very powerful skill shot, I try to stay behind minions because usually those types of skill shots can't go through them. But with Alawi, it's not like that. You can't stand behind minions because then she'll still hit you. If she hits you, then she's just going to beat the hell out of you, and you will be able to do nothing about it. And that's what I hate. Like, you, you can't. You physically can't in the early game unless you just are her counter, and you have to be a hard counter. Even, like, a regular counter will still probably lose if you become the vessel. Then... Um, her alt, honestly, I find her alt to be okay, but stupid at the same time. Um, I think, because something that you have to do as Alawi is, let's say, as I said, you are up against three enemy champions as Alawi. Because of that, it would spawn three tentacles, right? Wrong. It will spawn four, because one of the things that you are supposed to do, whenever you get close to them, you're going to use your E... And then you're going to alt because it counts the like their spirit form as another champion, causing four tentacles to spawn. Then your passive will usually spawn one, making it six or six five. I skipped a number, <laughs> making it five. Then you can activate your W, uh, giving all the tentacles the right to hit whatever you hit with your W. And then you're going to activate your Q, and you'll usually try to activate your Q in a way to hit multiple people, just giving you more HP. <laughs> As I said, we already are going to take away the HP off of the Q. Um, but th those are all things that are just like... that can really decimate your team. <laughs> what I would do is w if... She uses her alt, then that per causes her passive to, like, shut down or go on cooldown automatically. Um, now, if she happens, if you're a really smart Alawi, what you do is you let your passive go off with a tentacle, and then you try to engage. Um, and other time, like, it could be the opposite, where the enemy champions can realize that you haven't spawned a tentacle in a good amount of time, so they can bum-rush you real quick. That way you are forced to use your alt, and your passive will go on cooldown, and, yeah, you won't be able to, like, spawn even more tentacles. I would have the vessels from her E, or the spirits, not count as an individual champion. That way, if there's only three people around you, you are only fighting three tentacles, maybe four, if one of them spawned before she used her alt. That is all. I would not count any of the other things. As I said, I would let them heal off of getting hit by it because I would consider them part of your passive's tentacles. But at the same time, I don't think that the amount of damage it does, with how much it heals, how AoE it is, is really fully okay. And I don't think that it should have as many tentacles because each one is just more and more damage and more and more healing. So yeah, I would I would just shorten that by making the spirits not count as a champion, making your Q no longer heal, um, making her passive automatically go on cooldown whenever your ult is activated, and just that. <laughs> now, as I said, I have a little bit of a rework. Okay, so it. Hmm. So, what I have it being is a bit more of, like, both her spirit and her body is tested instead of being what she is now, which is more of, like, a stinking behemoth carrying around a giant golden idol. <laughs> but I would I would not, like, change her physique or anything. Well, I guess 
yeah, I wouldn't really change the physique. But what I would do is I would just make it more of a, like, like she has more of a spiritual sense. Like, kind of, the only spirit ability she has is her E. Like, I guess you could sort of count the tentacles, but I would say that that's not really messing with enemy spirits. Like, did you... I know I read this overview. Where is it? Yeah, shatter their perception of reality. Ripping their spirits from their bodies. She only has one ability that does that. She uses a huge golden idol to rip her foes. Like, uh, never battles alone. The god of the serpent isles is there with her. So, I just, like, even though she's tech, she's still technically battling alone. The only thing that's really there is tentacles. And even then, it's, <laughs> like, she's the one that controls where they go and where they don't. So, basically, I would kind of make her sort of two-ish champions. Um... So, what it would be is each one of her abilities would kind of have two different effects. Um... In a way. <laughs> so... How do I describe it? Her passive would basically be the same. It would cause tentacles to spawn all around her. They target champions that have, like, been turned. But what they're going to be is they... The tentacles will have two different manners, I guess I should say. They will always target enemies that have been hit by her in the, the physical world. But they will not do... Uh, they will not heal, and they will only do a reasonable amount of damage, not much. But when an enemy is in the spiritual world, no matter where they are... It will cause tentacles to attack this person. Now, they won't spawn around them, but they will cause tentacles to attack this person. And every time the tentacle hits the person, it will do slight bonus damage, that slight bonus magic damage. And it will do, um, and then that is what heal her. But it will only be to the people that are in the spiritual world. Her Q um, is going to be a bit tricky. So, basically, the way I have it working is that her Q is a physical ability, her W is a physical and spiritual ability, and her E is a purely spiritual ability. Um, what it will be is, like, her Q will basically be, uh, hmm, it, it'll basically be what her W is now. Um, it will be in, like, an auto-attack S thing where she jumps and slams you with the idol. But it will cause, it won't cause you to do any, go into the spirit realm at all or anything like that. What it will cause is just physical damage, and then the tentacles will want to hit you. But, uh, but you're not in, like, the spirit realm. Your, her W has a chance of putting you in the spirit realm. Um, her W will be, like, two different abilities at one, and you need to hit both the abilities to put this person into the spirit realm. <laughs> so, it'll be kind of, like, the exact same thing, uh, in essence, where your, like, first W will cause her to just, like, literally, like, shoot a, like, a spirit blast, like, an AoE in a cone-shaped type thing in front of her. Just shoot, like, a, a wad of energy, basically. Now, what this will do is this will mark you. Now, this will not have the tentacles attack you or anything like this. You'll just have, like, a spirit mark on you. Now, if you have a spirit mark on you, it will cause your E, her E, will be the same thing but a little bit different. It'll cause her E to directly pull you into the spirit world. Or it will cause her W... To put you into the spirit world upon reactivation. Um, now, reactivation isn't like she can reactivate it anywhere and you put, put in the spirit world. It's like her W has two parts, which is first it's the AoE blast. And then the second part will be a skill shot. Um, the skill shot, if it happens to hit you, which it can hit like terrain, it can hit everything under the sun. If it happens to hit you, it will send you into the spirit world. Now, you'll just be into the spirit world normally. Now, if her E 
happens to hit you, which will be like the same thing if she shoots a tentacle out, she'll grab you and she'll yank you. If you are in the... Um, if you are affected by her W, as I said, it will pull you directly into the spirit realm. If you are not affected, it will not even touch you, but it will go through minions. It will go through minions, and yeah, it will not even touch you. You can, like, if you see that you don't have a mark on you from, like, the spirit mark from her W, it won't matter. Um, to be truthful, I think that I was also originally going to have it that the if you get hit by your W, then you can also get hit by her Q. Um, like, the auto attack, and that will shift you into the spirit realm. Like, basically, if you are hit by any of her abilities, um, if you're hit by any of her abilities, then it will cause you to go into the spirit realm after you're hit by her W. But basically, like, her W will be key. Like, she has to hit you with that first. Now, <laughs> here's where things get a little interesting. If you're in the spirit realm, she cannot use her Q on you. If she happens to activate her Q, she will continue to auto-attack you, but it will not be the empowered auto-attack. When you're in the spirit realm, you will always be targeted by tentacles until you get out. The only way out is to either um, do a certain amount of damage to Alawi herself. There will be kind of like a spirit-esque shield that will she will get from her W as a passive. But it is not part of her HP. It is like, how do I put this? It will be a shield that you cannot damage at all unless you are in the spirit realm. And if you're in the spirit realm, then that is the only thing that you're capable of damaging. Once that shield is gone, you will immediately leave the spirit realm. <laughs> um, but yeah, and like the more people that are in the spirit realm at a time, the bigger this health bar will be. <laughs> now, any other champion is capable of auto attacking a person that is in the spirit realm, and they're capable of hitting anyone else. But when it comes to Alawi specifically, whenever they hit Alawi, she it only does damage to her spirit realm shield thing. And upon them, her losing her shield, they will automatically leave the spirit realm. The tentacles will stop hitting someone. So on and so forth. Uh, but then she will be able to hit you with her Q. Now, as I said, if she does hit you with the first blast of the W, it puts a mark on you. If you get hit by her E, you will not move at all. But what you'll do is you'll just immediately transfer into the spirit realm from where you are currently standing. Then, it's her W. As I said, there's a second part to her W, which is the Little Blast. Now, the Little Blast can transfer you into the Spirit Realm, or if you're already in the Spirit Realm from being hit by her E, but not her Q. I am going to keep that as an only physical ability. Um, if you are already in there from your E, then her W will shoot out like the bolt, but if you're already in the Spirit Realm, it will stun you. It'll hit you, and it will stun you for like a second or two, and then, yeah, you'll just kind of be stuck like that. Then she can walk over, and even, as I said, if she activates her Q, it won't matter. She'll just regular auto-attack you. Now, if you get hit by the first part of her W, and then the second part of her W, that each one will do damage, and then you'll be in the spirit realm, and then tentacles will be able to hit you and heal you, or heal her. But then, if she uses her E, which will be the tentacle, it will be as what I was saying, where it'll actually grab you, and it will yank you to her like a Blitzcrank hook. And as I said, since you're in the spirit realm, this means... That it goes over minions. It will not hit any minions at all. And it will just be a Blitzcrank hook. But to the max. <laughs> but you won't need to worry about that. As long as you dodge her her W. Um, and also her W though. The bolt. Even if you are in the spirit realm. It can still hit minions. It is still partially physical. Partially spiritual at the same time. So if you get hit by the first AoE of her W. And then she sh yanks you with her E. That will cause you to be in the spirit realm. Like where you're standing. So that it won't you won't be any closer to her. So if you're still behind minions. While in the spirit realm. She'll be able to use her W and blast. But it won't hit you. It'll hit a minion. Meaning you can just run away and... 
like no damage will really be dealt to you except for the first part of her W, and maybe if you get hit by a tentacle or two. Then there is her alt. So her alt will work in a bit different of a manner. Um, for every target around her that is in the spirit realm, it will spawn a tentacle. Um, for every target around her that isn't in the spirit realm, it'll just kind of do damage and put you in the spirit realm automatically. Meaning, something that she is capable of doing is, let's say, uh, you and her are currently fighting, and then, like, one of your allies comes in, and you both, she does her W A O E. She then shoots her W at you, causing the you to go into the spirit realm, and then she uses her E on the other person, causing him to go into the spirit realm, because both of you are hit by her AoE of her W. Then she uses her alt, causing two tentacles to spawn for each of you, and then each tentacle will then start beating the heck out of you, because you're both in the spirit realm, and tentacles automatically hit people in the spirit realm no matter what. And uh, then she can just auto-attack you because her... Q is useless while any enemy is in the spirit realm. But then let's say she uh, she gets ganked by like you and an ally. You start the fight, and she puts you in the spirit realm, but she used her Q, W, both parts of her W, and her E to throw you in there because you happen to dodge something. So yeah. But then your ally comes in right afterward. So what she's going to do is she then activates her R. This will cause one tentacle to spawn, because it'll be the one because you're in the spirit realm. And then it will cause your ally to just be thrown into the spirit realm, meaning the tentacles will still target both of you, but only one bonus tentacle would spawn. And then you just have to deal with however many passive tentacles are just around. So it is definitely a more complicated kit. Like her W only hits people that aren't in the spirit realm. It still makes tentacles attack people, but the ta tentacles themselves do less damage um, when you're not, like, and only do physical damage. When you're in the spirit realm, the tentacles will always be trying to hit you. Um, you can only be in the spirit realm for, like, a set amount of time, uh, for, like, five seconds, or if you happen to re leave the range, or if you take apart that one part of her shield. Um, but, like, let's say she uses her alt and she sends all five people into the spirit realm, but she doesn't spawn one tentacle. Like, she happens to be in the middle of your team. What this will do is it will give her a large shield that she, like, you basically, it's don't attack her. Because even if she's hitting you with, like, her W and her E, which, yes, will still be hurting, and, yes, it'll be a form of CC from her yank with her E... But at the same time, um, like, you're only going to be in the in the mode for five seconds anyway. So it's kind of like Mundo when he activates his alt, where you either want to, if one-shot him, completely and utterly take her out. If you think you can get through that shield in one go, do it. If you don't think you have the damage capacity for it, then honestly ignore her, kill the other members on her team, and then deal with her once you leave the spirit realm. Because in cases where she just five-man ulties, she probably won't have that many passive tentacles just laying around. And even if she does, it'll only spawn like one. She won't be able to use her, uh, her Q, so really she'll only be able to use the first part of her W, which will only do like a regular amount of damage. The second part of her W, which yes, will stun you because you're in the spirit realm, but still. And then her E, which will only be a form of CC because her E doesn't do any damage either. So really it'll be mostly her just auto-attacking you with, one form, with two forms of CC. Both that will do, well her W does do damage both times, but still, still. You probably just want to ignore her if she five-man ulties or she, like, four-man ulties and she gets a big-ass shield because of it, which is the spirit shield. Now, let's say you have one, uh, as I said, she four-man ulties and that fifth person isn't in the spirit realm. Um, they'll still see her shield, but if you attack her outside of the spirit realm, it will do direct health damage and it will not affect the shield at all. The only people that can damage the shield is the spirit realm. Now, everyone can see the shield, <coughs> but only the spirit realm people can damage it. 
So even if someone that is outside of the spirit realm tries to help you, they will not be able to help because they'll just be attacking her main HP, which will still be essentially helping, but not not an insane amount. Oh, also the spirit realm shield will not have any effect. Um, it won't be based off of her max HP. It'll just be based off of like a passive amount of shield that she gets just passively. <laughs> Meaning it will always be the same amount of HP. Well, like after she levels up, it will increase the shield a little bit at a time. But it will always be the same every single game. Well, unless they tweak it and update it. <sighs> and also her Spirit Realm shield will not have armor or magic resist on it. Meaning that if you're like Vigor <laughs> and you hit her with the W the second you go into the Spirit Realm and it just takes out the shield, then you're going to leave the Spirit Realm immediately. It has no armor or magic resist. It is pure health. So yeah, that is her rework that I came up with. Uh, as I said, it's really not fully Alawi. It sort of is, but still. I love her skins. Voidbringer, I think this one looks really, really cool. Mostly because of the idol, to be completely honest. I think I, I, I love it. I love this skin. The whole tentacle hair thing. She has the weird-looking eye gem. Her skin and like armor itself just looks very cool. I, I always love a lot of the things when it comes to the Void. The fact that like her idol... Looks like the darn um, aliens in Aliens vs. Predators ends in the Aliens movie. Looks like the Alien Queen. <laughs> the tentacles are like uh, lightning and just look so cool. Like th this skin is a 10 out of 10, honestly. I love this skin. This one I think is kind of okay. Uh, Resistance Alawi. Because it's basically just like battle cast, but not... Because it's like her against the battle cast people, but like in this, it makes it seem like less of an idol and more of just like pure mechanics, where like all of her tentacles and everything is just like a robotic thing with a shell. The idol itself is literally just a giant head. I don't really like this skin as much as the void skin. I do think it is still a good skin. Um, and I remember when they, like, it, this was when the skin where they said, D would you rather have this skin, this skin, or this skin as a Lowy? And I did vote for this skin, honestly. I thought that this one was the best of the other two. But, um, overall, I think that the skin is good, but not great. Um, and yeah, I would say that I would give it a solid 6, 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10. Um, to be completely honest, I really don't have a skin idea for her. All I have to say is that this Void skin is just top-notch, 10 out of 10. I guess, okay, actually, no, I do sort of have one, I would say, like a Deep Sea skin. Um, something like that. Um... Like, basically, think Nautilus and, like, Thresh, where he has his deep, his, like, deep terror skin or something like that. I would have something along that line. Or I'd do the Fizz type of skin where he has his... I need to look that one up. I don't I don't remember what it looks like on its... Okay, right here. Fizz skins, um... Here. Atlantean Fizz, I'd make it so, like, one skin where she has, like, more of, like, a fish body with, um, armor on, and then she's still carrying, like, a giant shark head as her idol. That would be pretty cool. Each of her tentacles would become, like, a blue, um, she'd have, like, a squid, uh, helmet or, like, squid, squid armor on, but then, like, the idol itself would either be, like, a shark head or... Or maybe, yet again, like a squid head. Or maybe, a, like, a living squid. <laughs> Something along that line, I think, would be kind of just both amusing and pretty cool to look at. Or I'd do, like, a deep terror skin where she'd have... Nah, I would say more of, like, an Atlantean skin would be my personal, like, what I think that she should get. But yeah, that has been Alawi. I do like her kit for the most part, but I do think there are a lot of really stupid things about her champion that are a bit, a bit busted. 
Um, I would really like it if like they did the full rework of what I said because I think it'd be a really interesting champion. There would be a lot of counterplay on both sides. It would probably increase her difficulty to three, which is a bit unfortunate. And the kit is a bit different than what I would like. Is a bit far away from her original kit that I would like. I try to keep kits very similar. Um, or at least feel very similar. And this would not. But at the same time, it is, does still have generally the same abilities with just different effects on them, basically. And I do think that it is a really cool rework. So if you happen to know any Riot members, please inform them of this video and so on and so forth. Uh, if you disagree or agree with anything that I've said so far, please let me know. I will be glad to respond to you in the comments or anything at all. Um, and um, please leave a like, subscribe, and hit that bell button. <laughs> and thank you all very much for watching. I'm going to bid you all adieu. Goodbye.